the wings of a Formula One car are subject to a deflection test. In 2010, the governing body doubled the deflection load of the front wing to 100 kilograms and this deflection must not exceed 20 millimeter. This test has to be done when the part is at rest, and this is a big flaw in the process. It can be reasoned that the FIA could have tried to measure this deflection under racing speeds, but how can you conduct measurements when the car is doing 300 kilometers per hour? While the front wing is subject to a load test, the rear wing is subject to a pull test. In motorsport, a wing's deflection is crucial to how fast a car can go in a straight or how much grip it can have in the corners. So teams somehow found a way to ensure that the wings pass the load test, but at high speeds, the teams can commandeer the wings to bend to their wishes. Video evidence can best explain this. In Baku 2021, you can observe the rear wing of the Red Bull car from the plane of reference represented by the yellow line. At normal speeds, everything is pretty much fine, but on the straights, the size of the wings shrinks thereby reducing the drag on the car. This is pretty much like having another drag reduction system, DRS, and let us call this rear wing flex the DRS one. In the corners, the wings become bigger, hence, increasing the drag and giving the car a lot more grip. However, this is not Red Bull alone. Mercedes is also in on it. You can see the change in size of the wing in relation to the plane of reference. If we move to the front wings, a similar thing is happening there. If you observe this Mercedes on the straights, the top plate of the front wing shrinks to reduce drag, but as soon as he approaches the corners, it bulges in size to give the driver a good grip. So let's call this front wing flex the second DRS. The third DRS is the normal flap that opens when a driver is within a second of another, and let's call it DRS 3. It is possible that McLaren is using a fourth DRS by flexing the floor of their car, but this can only be proven by physical inspection since there are no cameras on the floor. Wing deflection has been a controversial issue for decades. The FIA is usually selective in whether or not to punish this rule break. If you are not leading the championship and you use flexi wing, it's usually fair game. Left alone, every team will try and break the rules, but Red Bull has always been on the forefront of flexi wing controversy. So if in 2024, Red Bull tells you that a rival's wing has deflected even by just one centimeter, you can put your money on that because they are the masters of deflection. Red Bull are so good at it, they will even make the floor of the car deflect. Today's story is coming from Michael Schmidt, a man who has been in the paddock since 1981. Horner complained to him that Ferrari, Mercedes and McLaren were all using the flexi wing, and he said McLaren was the biggest culprit. The key issue with Horner is that he is unhappy that the governing body is basically turning a blind eye to it. They are not interested in slowing down the chasing pack. For decades, the flexi wing has always been a source of controversy. The flexi wing concept is the same regardless of which car is involved. F1 parts are made of carbon fibre and the material will bend if you introduce enough load to it. There is nothing anyone can do about that. Carbon fibre has incredible strength to weight ratio and it will be senseless to discard such material because it flexes. Compared to aluminum for instance, carbon fibre is two to five times stronger than aluminum of the same weight. Current cars are already bulky, so carbon fibre is not going anywhere. According to a technical regulation article, all aerodynamic components or bodywork influencing the car's aerodynamic performance must be rigidly secured and immobile with respect to their frame of reference. Furthermore, these components must produce a uniform, solid, hard, continuous, impervious surface under all circumstances. But of course, there is no such material that exists in the world that can satisfy these conditions, unless if they use enough steel in which case F1 cars will have the same weight as a Panzer. Within reason, everything will deflect with load. So what do we do when we have a rule that says all aero parts must be completely rigid? We cannot find a part that will be completely rigid while not being too heavy. Well, at some point, there is just nothing you can do about some things and this is one of them. To tackle this cheating, the body often introduced technical directives from time to time to clamp down on this flexi wings. Red Bull has always been in the forefront of this trickery. As early as last September, the team coincidentally suffered a massive performance in Singapore which conveniently coincided with when two technical directives regarding the flexibility of bodyworks were released. Dean brushed it off and said the technical directive TD18 and updated TD39 were not responsible for their performance drop, but instead suggested that it was all down to a bad car setup. In the years to come, we sure won't be hearing the last of the flexi wing controversy. What we can deduce this time around is that the body is trying to ensure the chasing pack could catch up with Red Bull, hence the reason why they are turning a blind eye to this issue. But who knows? Red Bull itself is probably using their own triple DRS right now. 
they will need to take it in good faith as Mercedes also complained a lot during their dominance that the FIA is trying to slow them down in order to help Red Bull catch up. Do you think the FIA is morally right to let the other teams catch up by ignoring the flexi wing use, or do you think they should have done the legally right thing and stopped McLaren? Let us know in the comments. This is Front Lockout. Signing off.